Glad to be back with you. This is the beginning of our fifth week together, and we're closing in on the end of the course. Uh, remember that uh, at the end of this week, you've got your second assignment that is due. And uh, I, I just want to have everyone go back and read the email that I sent to you regarding uh, my overall evaluation of the first assignment submissions. There were some things that I pointed out that uh, really need to be um, taken into consideration as you write. Uh, I continue to see some of this in the discussion forums, which uh, makes me realize that these are old habits uh, that many have and that we need to relearn. Uh, remember, learning is changing. And uh, if we want to move to a scholarly level, then we need to begin to write on such a level. So please go back and review that. Okay, this week we are looking primarily at, uh, well, specifically at organizational development and specifically with diagnostics, intervention, and evaluation. And, you know, you can really get bogged down in our textbook uh, in these uh three chapters that we're covering today. <clears throat> and the one thing that I realize is that the authors are writing for uh, an audience that is working in uh, probably larger organizations. And probably in those types of situations, the, uh, the need for uh, diagnostics and evaluation those kinds of things would be more in depth than what we might find uh, on a local church level. So, uh, you know, don't get bogged down in it, uh, but make sure that you understand the principles that they're uh, giving us. And then um, today I'll try to help us to streamline it a little bit to help fit uh, more of our situations. So, the guiding principles in organizational development are the core theories that we discussed last week, uh, specifically the ones regarding systems theory and uh, action research. Those are the two primary ones. But then also when it comes to uh, developing an organization, uh, individually we need to be mindful of our own values and our ethics and have those things that we bring to the table. And of course, from our perspective, we would also include our biblical values and biblical uh, understanding. Because uh, working within the kingdom organization, the Bible would serve as the foundation. So everything that we do needs to include that firmness of God's word. And then also uh, the authors mentioned the big quote, unquote, I intervention. And, and this means that each one of us are working to build a healthy relationship with other people in the organization, um, building trust, building authenticity, building transparency and mutuality. And, and so we want to have these things integrated with our core biblical values along with the understanding of systems theory and action research so that we can uh, properly uh, diagnose, uh, intervene, and evaluate. So uh, the four diagnostic phases that the authors talk about are the data collection, that is properly understanding the nature of the situation and the issues involved, uh, data analysis, that is properly analyzing uh, the situation and the issues, uh, realizing that when people give us information, they are giving information based on their personal bias and their personal understanding. And so make certain that you are able to analyze what they're saying and to filter it somewhat. Then there's the data feedback, that is being able to properly diagnose. Once you have gathered this data, you need to call through it and make sure that you properly understand what's being said or the data 
and that you are able to offer a proper diagnosis. I see uh, from my screen that my dog Snow White is wandering around. Uh, she's a full-blooded white German Shepherd, and uh, she's a she's a great dog. She fell in the lake yesterday or this week, and I had to go in and fish her out. And the water was cold. Uh, finally, action planning. That is designing the right course of act of action in order to solve the issue. So what are the aims of diagnostic um, uh, interventions? I wanna read a quote that is found in your textbook on page 73. It's a quote uh, that the authors provide uh, from Julie Nolan. It says, organization diagnostics is the collaborative process between organization members and the OD practitioner to collect relevant information, organize it, and feed the data back to the client system in such a way as to build commitment, energy, and direction for action planning. Organizations, uh, I'm sorry, organization diagnostics determines what is and what could be. It seeks ways to bridge the gap it forms the basis for determining subsequent interventions. And so I thought that this was a, a good understanding of diagnostics. And the, the, the primary aim of organizational diagnostics is, or organizational development diagnostics, is to gather the data and to understand a clear picture of the issue and how to proceed with a solution. Again, we need to keep in mind that the data that is given to us may not accurately reflect the situation or the issue at hand. And so there are things that we need to do to properly diagnose. Now, the wider aim then of the diagnostic process is to generate data so that we can launch that solution. So the diagnostic process has to generate buy-in and it has to foster communication and collaboration. And we talked a lot about buy-in when we were together. Uh, we are not uh, on our own. And the idea of the God told me to tell you concept within the kingdom is, is really not what works. It might have worked for Moses. And we would read that Moses had difficulty with that God told me to tell you. Uh, you know, the people said, who are you to tell us to do this? And so that process doesn't really work today uh, because the people that we're leading are people that deal with this kind of thing all the time. And so it's important that we uh, understand the, the need to generate buy-in and communication. Uh, now, there are pitfalls that I want to point out to you that we need to avoid. And the first one is to understand the political uh, the politics of the organization. Uh, there are politics within every organization, re regardless of the size of that organization. And understanding who the influencers are, understanding whether they have a title or not, that these people are able to influence. And they that is a political uh, issue. Uh, so we need to understand who those influencers are. Uh, and then we need to call through all the data carefully, making sure that what we're understanding about the situation accurately reflects the true nature of the situation. Now, there are various diagnostic collection methods that the authors give you, uh, and I don't want to take the time to go through all of those, but you know, a lot of the information that we're going to gather is going to be in one-on-one -on -one inter uh, interviews or conversations. It may be a water cooler conversation that you're having. Uh, you could bring together focus groups to help uh, gather data. Uh, another one that I thought that was, was very interesting is external visits. And this would be something that would be very new, I believe, in the church. And that is taking a group of people from your church and visiting another church and seeing what they're doing and and then observing those situations to see, you know, is this working or is it not working? How would it work in our church? I think a lot of times in the church today, we tend to look at something and someone else is having success with it 
and we think, well, you know, we can do that. Well, it might not work within your organization. So it's important that we are able to call through that data and determine what might work. Uh, so observations, uh, you can have questionnaires, you can build a survey and hand it out to people uh, of influence and people in the know so that you can gather data. Another thing uh, that they offer is storyboarding, uh, and that is having people draw it out, you know, uh, what they are thinking. And then another one, and I really like this one, is storytelling. Have them tell the story of the organization. What, what is their understanding of the story? And then finally, culture mapping, seeing how it all fits together and works together. So these are various ways that we collect data. Now, the intervention is really complex, and uh, the authors even warn of the complexity of the intervention. And it's all going to depend on the organization and the situation or the issue at hand. Uh, but I want to point you to page 93, figure 5.1. And it gives you a list of tasks and a list of skills. And you can take that, that uh, figure and you can tailor it to your situation and, and make it work for you. So keep that in mind. And then there are different levels and types of intervention. And they give you nine levels of intervention. And I just break them down this way. Uh, there's individual, there's group, there's unit, there's organization and environment, that's five, okay? Individual, group, unit, organization, and environment. These are the nine levels of intervention. And then there are seven types of intervention, and these types of intervention are all going to be uh, dictated by the situation. That is, does it need to be an individual situation? Does it need to be uh, uh, an intervention that's targeted to a specific department or team within the organization? Is it going to uh, need to be very structured or can this be unstructured? A lot of the things that we deal with in the church, sometimes you know, just one conversation with one person is going to be all it takes. Uh, but then there may be other issues that we have to bring more people into. So, the type of intervention that we have is going to depend upon the issue and how we need to tackle it. And then finally, the evaluation phase or evaluating the intervention. Now, evaluation is a critical step in organizational development because it's important that we're able to evaluate what we're doing. And so building a culture of evaluation is one of the things that the authors uh, really push for us to do. Now, we are going to be talking more about culture of organizations a little bit uh, next week or the week after. However, uh, you know, the culture of the organization reflects the values and beliefs of that organization. And we need to incorporate evaluation within our culture so that the expectation is that we are going to look at this and we are going to evaluate it going to include evaluation in our discussions with teams and, and various organizational meetings that we have. When we bring all of our leaders together, let's evaluate. And then uh, one of the things that they talk about that's really outside of most of our talk within the kingdom of God and culture is return on investment. Uh, we tend to think that investment is money and that we're really a nonprofit organization, but what is the return on the investment that we're making? When we hire a youth pastor, is there a return on that investment? If we hire someone in the nursery, is there a return on that investment? Now, that investment may not bring more money, but it may be changed lives. And so consider return on investment in our discussion of evaluation. So I'll be uh, getting the uh, rubric up for you. Be sure to review the rubric as you are working on your assignment to make sure that you are addressing these issues. And I'll see you next week. God bless you.